While Andy practices to be a superstar, earlier this year, Violet went to Laguna Beach in California to meet a real superstar of the computer games world. Dave Perry is the hit programmer behind big games like Aladdin and Earthworm Jim. And this year, he and his team have been creating Earthworm Jim 2. Shh. And here he is, the great man himself, clearly deep in thought. Now, we've arranged for interview Dave about his new game, Earthworm Jim 2, which is almost certainly thinking about at this very moment. I'd just like to thank the Academy for this honor. I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, my art teacher. This is a very proud moment for all of us. The Brits are coming. Well, clearly Dave is lost in his creative thought processes. So, uh, while we're waiting, let's have a look at how Earthworm Jim 2 is coming along. Bursting onto the screen this Christmas, the worm is back. The sequel is packed with new features and crazy creatures, with pig shoots and granny movers, just two of the devious new perils that the worm has to slither past. Everyone has their favourite level, but apart from the unicycling maggots, what tickles Dave's fancy? Dave? Dave who? This idea of Dave's is going to be just amazing. This whole area is just buzzing. On a huge project like Earthworm Jim 2, there are dozens of different elements that gel together for the finished game. Traditional artists, software programmers and animators all have to come up with great ideas and make them work, beginning with graphic designers like Steve. When we came up with the concept, I decided I wanted to see it all in 3D and get as good a 3D look as we possibly could. And the programmers just said, basically, forget it, this can't be done. But I kept on pestering them, and finally they've come up with something that's much better than I thought we'd be able to do, as you can see. The programmers split the play area into strips, from the top of the screen to the bottom. Then they let the strips scroll across the screen separately at different speeds, which gives the illusion of depth and a 3D feel. What we found on Jim 2 is that um, we've really pushed the machines now to their final limit. We believe this is as far as they can go. An even bigger headache was the soil level. Here, Jim can choose to go anywhere on screen by digging through the soil with a dentist's drill. The computer has to make thousands of calculations a second to work out where the soil is falling from, where it will land, and then what shape it will form for Jim to walk on. A real mathematician's nightmare. My first reaction, you can't do that but they uh, persuaded me to give it a little bit harder try. Presumably, if he hadn't solved the problem, Dave would have taken out his other arm. Dave? Dave who? Any minute now. Well, you can't hurry these things. The original Earthworm Jim had a very distinctive look because it used a new animation technique. This technique made Jim move incredibly smoothly, but for Earthworm Jim 2, the animators wanted him to look even sexier. We continued to use the paper animation like we always had, but we drew a separate shadow layer onto um, the paper and then put that on top of these images. And when we put the two together, we get this image here with the shadow on top of the drawing and it gives it a little bit more dimension. And the shadows actually animate with the drawings. Nice work, but not as sexy as Dave, eh? Dave? Dave who? Well, if he wasn't so busy now working on his great ideas, I'd obviously now be thanking Dave for being with us. Still, I'll always treasure the memories of being in the presence of the great man at work. Thanks, Dave. Nice work if you can get it. Earthworm Jim 2 will be out in December. But now it's time for this week's news and previews. And more news about the M2 cartridge for the 3DO that we mentioned earlier. Apart from the racing game, there are two other games under development. This one, a Doomstar shoot-em-up and a brilliantly animated beat-em-up. There are only two characters in the demo at the moment, a fighting fit female and a vicious velociraptor. You may have seen on TV recently footage that purports to be an autopsy of an alien life form. Well, if you want to judge for yourself if it's genuine or just a special effects mock-up, this CD contains the full 20-minute silent black and white film showing the alien being taken apart piece by piece. Not for the squeamish, or the gullible. You've seen the film, you've read the bank balance, now play the game. Waterworld, the most expensive film in history, is soon to be a game on the SNES and Mega Drive. The game is made up of three different types of gameplay. 
There's a 3D shoot 'em up where you have to escape from the evil smokers, and two sorts of platform, one on dry land and one based deep beneath the sea. And now for some more games reviews. Holy mackerel, the bat is back. In his biggest adventure yet, Batman Forever on the Snares. The caped crusader is still stalking Gotham City, but this time not content with taking on one supervillain, he's matching fists with the whole darn lot of them. The winged wonder can punch, kick and blast his way past enemies, Two-Face and Riddler, solving puzzles, executing super moves and picking up a fine array of technical gadgetry. Over to Aisha. This is another typical platform game released on the back of a block, so it could have been a lot better. This is level three at the circus. Batman's got to find the bomb and defuse it, so he's racing against the clock. I found the graphics very monotonous, and it's difficult to figure out where to go, and there's no indication of what to do. Although, like most platform games these days, there's a lot of hidden levels. A major flaw in the game is that it stops every time you go to a new area. You'd expect that on a CD, but not on a cartridge. It's really tedious waiting for the next bit to load. Nowadays you expect good graphics, but this is an old-fashioned and frustrating game to play. A few elements of this game fail to impress. It's a bit slow and a little dark, but overall it keeps you hooked. It plays great, but you spend too much time waiting for levels to load. And the scores for Batman Forever, not good I'm afraid. The boys gave it 2 out of 5 and the girls 3 out of 5. This is Primal Rage, a prehistoric beat-em-up with a difference. The monsters have the usual range of gruesome special effects and fatalities, and the game is coming out on a range of formats, including Game Boy, Game Gear, SNES, and Mega Drive. But does it have what it takes? Over to Chris with the Mega Drive version. Primal Rage is yet another beat-em-up, but instead of the more usual human-like characters, you play with vicious prehistoric mutants. The animation is fluid, and a lot of work has clearly gone into the graphics. But the whole game is very dated, the characters are limited, and to be quite honest, we've seen a lot of games on the market that do this kind of thing better. I'm playing talent here, I've just been a face ripper, which has beaten chaos. Anyone who has played the coin op will have a hard time adjusting to the joypad controls. It isn't really suited to a home conversion. It's an outdated style of game, the graphics are tacky. It's a waste of time, energy and money, and I'm definitely not impressed. It's slow and it doesn't compare to any of the recent fighting games. The characters merging with the background too much and I became bored too quickly to find out any of the special moves. Scores them? Well, the boys gave it a sad 2 out of 5 and the girls an even lower 1 out of 5. That's just about it for this week. Just time to fit in our competition. We're giving away a Sega Saturn with Panzer Dragoon. And the question is, what was the original meaning of the word Dragoon? Was it A, a soldier, B, an insect? or see a mythical beast if you think you know call us on 0891 800 300 0891 800 300 the call will cost you no more than 25p the lines will stay up until midnight on sunday but do please get permission from whoever pays the phone bill before you dial and remember we always check if you have done that's right guys you can't win if you haven't asked for permission mm -hmm. right time to get going off you go, off you go. Oh, come on come on that really is it for this week so it's goodbye from me and take it away andy and craig as far away as possible, preferably. <laughs> <laughs>